Yeah. Okay. We were supposed uh, to air from in there. Well, there we go. That was the eraser head shot, folks. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we have a little issue. Like I said earlier, I was talking to you. Um, it's a little glitch in the software. Yeah. So I'm going to um, just going to continue talking here. Um, everything is good there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Going, Sorry. <laughs> That was just, don't know where my chat went to. It's, uh, it's probably not just on delay. <laughs> yeah. But um, okay, I'm gonna do one quick thing so, so we can play what we did. What earlier. we're gonna do um, right now is we're trying to get that uh, video loaded up from the kids uh, getting ready for the bake sale last night. Uh, today, uh, wanted to uh, air that, uh, give you guys a chance to see that and how much fun they had and. Um, Kind of in between, I went and took a walk, and so I just thought it would be nice uh, for you guys to see an actual uh, event of something that we're doing here, something live. Um, it did. Uh, some of you may have seen it on um, the uh, UStream. That's where we uh, aired it from last night or today. So um, yeah, we're just gonna wait for this to happen and then we'll show it to you um i don't my chat's not back yet so i don't know what's going on with that um d is trying to load his uh yeah, gotta do it this way there we go got something happening here okay so <laughs> what it's doing uh I'm uh, uploading it to, which I sh actually I should have done earlier to. Uh, it's those cat naps, I'm telling you. It's those cat naps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sits there and he goes, meow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. Yeah. So okay, we'll so. Get something going here. Okay. <laughs> I just seen a whole bunch of different screens and stuff going through here. Um, so yeah, there, there's um, as soon as our my little uh, hmm? nephew gets back here, I'm going to interview him. Um, I still want to um, uh, that video that you, we I just showed and. Um, uh, Miles Howe was talking at the beginning of it. Um, what he was referring to there, and that was the actual day um, uh, of the day that uh, a bunch of us were invited to sit with. Um, here, I'm going to just turn this so he can work and I can talk to you. Um, it was the day that um, we went to go and meet with all word and that's the day that uh, miles is talking about and in my opinion a lot of people uh spoke way out of turn uh, on that issue uh people who should not have even spoke on that issue were speaking about it and those who thought they knew what was going on uh didn't completely fully inform people either um there was no sellout. There was no conspiracy. There was nothing uh, wrong whatsoever with that meeting. Uh, it had nothing. We were not. It had nothing to do with us going against our treaty rights. It had nothing of that. Um, the man that spoke earlier on the video prior uh, with the artist, that guy um, was basically. You know, he sounded so intelligent and so educated in, you know, talking in that video about the man's painting, uh, Jerry's painting. But, you know, sometimes, like, really, education in the wrong hands is terrible, detrimental. And in this guy's case, big time. He, um, he was the one that was filling in all of the people. Uh, telling them, uh, you know, corrupting their minds 
and telling them, oh, oh, they're selling out. That's why they're gone. That's why they went to Moncton. That's why it's a closed door meeting, blah, 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 blah. And not even knowing what was really going on. He was having a, a literally a childish hissy fit because he was not invited to the game. He was not invited to the party. So he decided he was going to throw a monkey wrench in everybody's day. Uh, he had people ready to uh, riot practically at the camp the day that we were meeting with our if we didn't step out of that meeting he you know uh we were gonna pay for it we were going to, oh it was crazy and this guy like i don't he i don't know how he received so much power i don't know if he just took it upon himself but this guy had so much um influence um he was the puppeteer of all puppeteers that I have ever seen in my whole life. Um, he had um, families against families. He had communities against communities. Um, province against province for a while. Um, I, excuse me. I'm getting... Uh, my stomach is bothering me. Um, yeah, uh, this guy, um, he caused so much hurt and pain in our community. It was unreal. The, um, uh, I don't know. I, I want to, I want to find this video and it'll show you people took this video as a sign of, um, such power and grace and you know this guy is uh the ultimate warrior and uh you know but if you really listen to his words and what he's saying to that female officer it's disgusting it is the worst thing that any man could ever say to another woman and regardless if she's in a uniform or not what he said to her was disgusting what he and and was so proud of it and you know like he he bragged literally on camera on uh, what he has done to people in jail and what he could do to this woman if she was to spend a little if a uh, little bit of time with him and stuff like that like this guy is oh he just makes me sick, literally sick. Um, he took our youth and and brainwashed them in in such a way that they literally, when he was in court, they stood up and they raised their hand like this to him and honored him as he was being brought out brought into the court. Within a matter of minutes. That guy turned his back on everybody that was in that room and said, I don't give a shit if these people uh, drink dirty water. I don't give a shit if they die. Just let me go home to my family. That's the kind of guy this this Jim Picto is. And everybody freaking put him on a pedestal. Everybody looked at him like the ultimate warrior. He was the guy to go to i mean we even had people on live stream bragging him up and yet he was down here well he's being charged for rape people like really that's the kind of man you want to look up to no not me not my family not my kids and i hope not my community anymore because this guy is evil He's taken our kids and the things that I have heard from some people that have been around him is disgusting. He took our youth into the woods, threatened them, told them if they were ever to turn their back on him and the warrior society, they would get a bullet in the back of the head. That's what this guy is about. And, you know, it, oh, it just, ooh, 
makes me so angry that so many people allowed him into our community, allowed him back into our community more like it, and then gave him such power, gave him, you know, yeah, you're, you're the, 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 uh, general, I think they, they call them or whatever. I mean, this guy is nothing. When the raid went down and this came from his own warriors, when the raid went down on October 17th and the RCMP started running through with their guns, he was the first one to fall on his belly, face down, hands on his head and be escorted out. And he wasn't even roughed up. He was handcuffed and gently walked out. All the rest of the warriors got their asses kicked. You tell me who sold who out. You know, this guy is, ah, uh, he's evil. And, um, ah, uh, I'm just, it, uh, it just makes me sick that somebody like this could come into our community and do that. And then, you know, all these other people start coming around too and thinking that they could do the same thing. I mean, like I mentioned on one of the shows, this Makwa dude, I mean, like he came in and people did the same damn thing with him. Oh, he's so smart. He's so this and he's so that. Makwa is a Google warrior. He goes on Google. He finds a quote. He changes it to his liking and it's his words. That's what he does. He's a Google warrior. He has no words of his own whatsoever. And the other dude, he he has nothing except for, you know, the intimidation and the drugs and everything else that he used to manipulate our youth and our women. Two of my sisters, two of my younger sisters turned their back on me and the rest of our family because of this idiot. I mean, like, it just makes me so angry that he would come out and, you know, come to our community and disrespect. Like, he's supposed to be a warrior, right? So he says. Warrior society, you come into another community, you come into another uh, district, no matter what. You are not in charge. The people are in charge. You go to their warrior chief and you sit with their warrior chief and you discuss what is going to happen with them. You don't go and appoint your own damn warrior chief. So the one that you can manipulate all the way through. No, that's not how shit gets done. You know, you don't go and you, you don't start um, giving people rank just because they, you know, kiss your butt more than the others. You don't go and threaten youth and children and women. Warriors don't do that. But this guy, he did. And people are, like, it just drives me nuts that people look at this guy as some kind of hero, which he's not. He's just a... Uh, <laughs> so many words I could say right now, but I'm not going to. He, um, like the, what he did to our community, it was ridiculous that one man could do that. And, you know, and there's this other guy, you know, this Makwa guy, same freaking thing. He had all of these women around here looking at this. Oh, he's so smart. And oh my God, he, it's just, somebody told me, I think it was my sister told me, oh yeah, he has this, this pipe. And on one side of the pipe, there's a, there, there's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a pipe, but when you turn it over, it's a, an ax and his, um, in his community or his elders or whatever, uh, bestowed that right to him that he could call war or he could call peace. That's what the symbolism of this pipe was, but he smoked weed in this pipe every day, you know? So he's going to have peace or war, right? And he held this like in such, like, I don't know, in his mind, he really thought he had that much power. And he started, <laughs> yeah, he started actually um, trying to convince people of that power. And, you know, I might have sounded like a real bitch half the time, but I knew when these guys came in, what they were there for because I got this 
negative vibe from them. I got a negative vibe from Jim and I got a negative vibe from uh, Makwa. And both of those negative vibes turned out right. These guys were here to do us harm. And they, you know, and people still would not listen to me. Uh, it's so frustrating, you know, having to, 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 to do that. And the whole time, right from that day, from that video, right from then on, I had nothing but fighting and fighting and fighting for our chief. The Nova Scotia Warrior Society continuously dogged him every chance they had. And they would start talking down about him in front of me. And one day I stood up as if that's it. I don't care what opinion you have of our chief, of my chief. You are not, you know, to speak badly about him in front of me again. You don't want to, you don't like him? Fine. You don't, you know, respect him? Fine. But you do not disrespect my chief in front of me again. And I walked away from them. A few days later, I found out I was banned from the Warrior Society camp. Um, I, if I was to, to go in that area, the warriors were to the young warriors were to escort me out. So that that kind of gives you an idea of exactly um, what kind of mindset was going on in that camp and what what this Jim Picto uh, did to our youth, where our youth would actually listen to him and literally forcibly escort one of their elders out on his word. You know, in a lot of people's eyes, I'm considered an elder in this community. And he would actually put an order out to have me escorted out of the area if I was to go near the warrior camp. So, you know, like... That's the kind of man this guy was. And I'm not hiding it anymore. I don't give a shit if I piss people off. I don't care if they think I'm disrespecting their society or their warriors. I don't give a shit anymore. You know, I've been holding on to this for way too long. And these people, you, the ones who are watching and all the ones who are going to be watching this later, need to know the truth. And the truth is, Jim Picto is the worst thing to ever happen to our movement day one. If he ever comes to any one of your movements, get him the hell out of your town. Makwa, same thing. I want to put pictures up of these guys and I'm going to let everybody know. This is what they look like. If they show up, get them out of your town. Do not let them in because they will poison whoever steps in front of them. They'll poison their minds and their hearts. Believe me, I seen it. It happened to me. He didn't have a chance to poison me. He he actually looked at me and he says, you scare me. And I said, good, I'm glad somebody does. But my other two younger sisters, he had them in his control almost from day one. And now they still are. They honor him and they don't even recognize that I'm their sister anymore. That's how much of an ass this guy is. That's how much power he had over the women and the youth that were in that camp. So I want to, that's my rant right for today. Uh, it's just, I seen his face, I seen him talking and it really pissed me off. Like I said, I haven't seen a lot of these videos that I'm, I'm actually sharing with you guys. And when I seen that video and I seen him talking, it just enraged me so much that I, I just had to get that out. I'm sorry, but that it's the truth. Really, it is the truth. And this guy, don't let him in. He comes knocking, lock your doors. Don't let him. I, I mean, I'm so serious about that. So we got a video, I hope, starting up. Do I just click this one? Uh, it's, it's still it, not it, working. Yeah, <laughs> so go, uh, I'm downloading it to YouTube. And then we'll play it from oh, YouTube. Okay. So go on to other stuff and then we'll. Once it's finished downloading, we'll play it from there. Okay. So anyway, uh, not this dude. Uh, this guy is a pretty good guy. He actually actually on this screen. But I want to show you something here. The guy right now, he's uh, one of the Millier boys. But um, I want to show the people the... What? What? <laughs> a bass. Oh, they got a bass? Holy! You guys want to see a fish? 
Bring it over. <laughs> this is one of our bass from... Bring it over. Whoa! Oh, that's a salmon! Check this out, guys. This is exercising our treaty rights. Here you go. I want to show you something here. Look at this. Look at the size of that bass. And the one on the other side is a salmon. <coughs> Can, can you guys see that? Bass. <laughs> Salmon. Lift Salmon. it up. Lift it up. Bring it up close. Oh, look at that. Now that's a fish. <laughs> Yar. Yeah. Ooh, it's dripping. That was just caught. Like, those suckers are fresh. The size of that bass. Where'd you guys get them? Just down over at the Richie's. Oh, really? Holy. This is the water that is right off to us over here mm -hmm. uh that, that's where they caught these just over here off of this water here but down down the road a little bit so yeah that's that's our fish that's how we uh survive around here being our uh our true fishermen yeah <laughs> so um yeah i'm gonna go back one video and i'm gonna sh again i want to show you this guy's No, I'm looking for the video first. You stop directing me, <laughs> Mr. Director. <coughs> I'm looking for that one. Yeah. Is there a buddy here? He's <laughs> actually being uh, interviewed. Well, we were actually. <laughs> I'm gonna, I wanna. The Jerry LeBlanc, yeah. Okay, here he is. I'm going to go up. Okay, and there. Okay. I'm going to show you this guy. This is the one I was telling you about. This guy right here. He. This is Jim Picto. The general, as he calls himself, right? I'm going to give you a good view of him. This is the guy that manipulated so many people. Um, you know, like I said, education is a great thing. Education in the wrong hands is detrimental. And, and in this guy's case, big time. He, yeah, I, you know, I agree. He knew about our treaties. He knows how to, um, you know, his words, but that's the deadly part. He uses his words to get people to look, to jump in on his side. And then once he's got them, he manipulates them to do what he wants. And then he just sits back and smiles and watches all the chaos happen. And then when the shit hits the van... What does he do? He lays down on his belly and he gives up. And that's exactly what he did. He laid down on his belly on October 17th and he gave up. In the court, he turned his back on all the people and said, let them drink dirty water. I want to go home. That's this guy. And I wanted you guys to see this face because if he ever comes to your town, if you have something going on, uh, any kind of... Uh, occupation, protests, you name it. You see this face? Get him out of your town. Because he's he's going to hurt somebody. And he's already done enough in our community that, to last a lifetime. So, that, uh, that was my rant for the day. <laughs> Thank you for listening. But, no. Um, yeah, my, my interviewers, uh, or interviewee, is I hope that how it didn't is? walk to Timmy's. <laughs> well, he went. Up the hill he went to Tim's, and then they were supposed to go to uh, just for a drive. So I'm not sure where. The Ute. I, I don't. Those, those youth of the ours. Ute. Your Honor, what's a youth? Oh, excuse me, a youth. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna get this a-hole's okay. yeah, face off of the. 
screen right now. So, anyways, that was my rant. I got another picture I wanted to show you guys, too, of the other idiot that was running around, running rapid in our community. Uh, let me see. Let's see if I can find him. Because I think you get, everybody needs to know who these... And I don't even call them provocateurs. I just call them idiots. Um, because basically they come in and yet they're not really agents. They're too dumbass to be agents. They just come in and think they're agents of some, some, some sort, especially this Makwa dude. I mean, he's originally from, uh, Saskatchewan, I think. No, Elliot Lake, Ontario. Oh, Elliot Lake, Ontario. There he is. Northern Ontario. Yeah. And this guy, I'm telling you, he, um, he came in and he literally thought he was our savior. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> he actually told some people that he was sent here to save us. Um, the Catholics couldn't do it. So how the hell could he think he was going to? But anyway, um, he really thought he was here to save us. He really thought that if he wasn't here, you know, oh, the, our, our community was going to fall apart and everything else. And then he started going into this, oh, demanding I'm going to, uh, oh, he needs to have this and he needs to have that. And he, oh my God, it was just, um, you know, oh, I just, <laughs> when I think of these two guys, I just want to lose it like so bad, but they, um. You know, like I said, you know, education sometimes is a really deadly thing. Um, but really, I don't think this other dude was educated. Like I said a while ago, he um, is a Google warrior. Everything he's ever said. And the funny part about it is I actually took one of his quotes that he's, you know, he ranted on about, you know, him, you know, being the... Uh, scholar that he alleged to be and i took one of his quotes <laughs> highlighted it put it on google and it actually came up <laughs> um and what was the name of that game there's a game that the kids play and <laughs> the words that this guy used it made it look like he was so smart that he was uh you know the ultimate you know uh, you know, but <laughs> I laughed my ass off literally when I hit search and this guy, everything that he said, everything that he had posted on <laughs> his Facebook page on his, uh, Makwa strong. It was a complete right out of Google. I mean, <laughs> and I laughed. I mean, I couldn't help. I just laughed. And then I took it. And of course I, uh, I shared it on Facebook saying, you know, look, like, and I showed the exact quote and then his quote. And, um, yeah, this, this guy is just a joke, but I don't know why our people keep falling for these idiots and thinking that they're such great scholars and they're such great people, but yet, oh, here he is. I'm going to give you this picture. Let you. There's two of them, actually. These two guys that I want to show you. Um, I'm going to go here. There you go. And I'm going to go to full screen. And okay. This guy right here. Um, this one is. Everybody called him Trench Coat Joe. Um, he too is not from the area, but he's been living in Halifax for a while. And he came down and creepy as hell. Um, he, the things that he has said and done to people around here, unreal. Uh, he looked at one of the women and told her, you know, I could be in your home and you would not even know it. I mean, that's how creepy this guy is. That's trench coat Joe. This guy. 
as the other one. This is the Google warrior right here. And he is the, um, the one that everybody was so crazy about. He was the ultimate, uh, scholar and everything else. And, um, again, just another fraud who came in, uh, basically stole money from us. He would stand out on the highway with a bucket saying he was raising monies for the warriors fund to help the warriors. We never seen a drop of that money. Uh, last I heard every time he went out and asked for money, the last time he was out there doing that and it, it called like toll gating, which is something that we do legally here in our community to help people, you know, raise money for this, that, and the other thing. This guy was doing it on the highway at 134 camp and saying that he's doing it for the, uh, warrior society, not the warrior society, but for the warriors to help them, you know, with funding or whatever. But yet he would be seen down, you know, in the at the local uh, drug dealer. So um, that just kind of tells you what kind of person, you know, these guys are. Um, you know, even in this picture, you look in real close, like the guy looks like he's fried. But um, yeah, so I really, you know, the, um, the things that, you know, you see on... That's not working either. I was trying to get the uh, other video to come back, but that's not going to work. Um, you know, the things that you see on camera, on um, what's happening here. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's gone. Okay. I was just checking that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not always uh, what you see isn't always what you get. And what you get isn't always what you see around here. There was, like I said, for so long, I've been keeping my mouth shut about a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm at the point where now I, I just don't give a shit. Um, I'm not going to hide the fact that these guys were around and what they did. Um, like I said, um, you see either of these, any three of these guys in any one of your movements, um, any one of your protests, uh, I suggest take a picture put it in your community and just put a warning you see this guy in your community get him out of it either one of those three they're, they're all bad news and if there's anyone else that i find um, i'll definitely share it with the rest of you because i don't want any of anybody to go through what we went through with these guys i mean like they almost tore this community apart and because everyone had such high regards to these warriors and you know they came after us when we were at our weakest when we really really needed people to come out and help us you know i was put in a cast everything else people were getting arrested left right and center yeah we needed people we needed bodies we needed people we did not need vigilant um like vigilantes and we did not need drug headed uh, you know, freaking crackheads and all this other shit that we ended up getting. We needed people. We needed honorable warriors. And there's a difference between holding the warrior name or just walking around with a camo jacket. There's a big difference. Some of these guys were just dressing the part. Others were actually living the part. And then you ended up with Jim. And uh, I really... Um, I really hope that, you know, if our fight is over, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, you know, lay down and take a really, really long nap. And, but if it's not, um, I really hope that the people, uh, watch these videos, listen to my words and heed the warning. Do not let this guy back in our community. Do not let this guy in your community if you are having some sort of battle. Um, he, it's just going to be, you're going to regret it. I, I'm sorry, but you will. Um, you need honorable people. We need honorable people to come and stand with us. Um, I would rather have had um, 
I don't know, <laughs> a band of monkeys standing beside me than to have that guy and his crew. And actually, his crew wasn't that bad. He had a really, a lot of really good guys in that crew. It was the leadership that made it so bad. And the things that he said and did, uh, if I could find that video of him, I mean, like, this is his own words and what he's saying. It, it's so disgusting what he says to that woman. And, you know, I'm no fan of the RCMP, you know, and most of you know that. But what he said and how he said it, oh my God, like I would not want this guy to be anywhere near me at night. You know, he is that goddamn creepy. Um, and we're still not getting our use stream going. <laughs> it's been loaded. It's been everything and we're yeah. not getting anything it's yet. But um, anyway. Hmm? So, um, yeah. Um, we're, we're still trying to get this going. It, it's not working today, tonight. Um, I want to go and find, where is it? Oh, right here. Hopefully we'll sort it out. If yeah. Not, we'll definitely play it tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, the thing is, uh, the video wasn't loaded onto the computer. So whatever's happening with the computer and the live stream, the you stream actually. It's not quite uh, I'm uploading it working to YouTube it now. as we speak, so maybe it'll be ready oh, okay. soon enough. Um, the heck was the name of that road? The road. Hannah. Not Hannah, the other one. Salmon River. Salmon River. Oh, the, salmon, the airport. Crossing. Airport. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's a video of um, oh, what yes. happened on the airport road. Yes. Yeah, there is. Oopsie. I learned to learn how to spell. This is the only way I can see the live stream. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh! Because you have Bushnet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have to come and watch it be live. Live. <laughs> <laughs> and our studio audience, folks. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm still. Looking, I, I shared a video actually with my uh, students the other day about um, one of the warriors, um, and it was a really good video. And um, I'm gonna see if it's here. I, I just seen one from uh, Susan and um, the. Uh, it, it reminded me of that. That um, I teach native studies at the. At one of the schools that I go to, and uh, the uh, this like we've been talking about native issues, and this is one issue that is very you know on the forefront of everything as far as native issues go, and um, so I, I talk quite a bit to my students about it, and um, of course they have umpteen dozen questions, knowing that I was one of them that was there. Um, they think it's, you know, the greatest thing knowing that their teacher was one of the people <laughs> that was at the protest. Um, they, um, but they're, you know, they're asking a lot of questions and they're learning a lot too. So, um, the, uh, <laughs> the thing is, you know, when I get a chance to, to show them something, I have to be very careful of, of what I show them and uh, what they see. I can't, uh, because it is a, a school, um, I have to be very careful of what I expose them to. Uh, but this video of this young fella, um, he's basically explaining what happened at um, Airline Road. And um, I thought it was an excellent video because... Uh, it was very well spoken and um, very well mannered, and uh, unlike the young fellow that was uh, out there to begin with, and he even admits you know, how much of a change he's made in his life since that day. But uh, he too was not in the camp the day of October seventeenth. 
there was uh, quite a few of us who who were not in the camp that day and only a select few mind you i'm one of those select few um is being considered uh, a sellout a rat um whatever you want to call it uh by a number of people uh yeah right here in this very community and um that's one of the things that uh one of the crosses that i guess i have to bear um yeah I i'm just trying to find this video it's a um uh, there port airport road <laughs> i can hear them talking in the house um yeah so this young fellow he uh he really surprised me with uh his words and how he um uh, how he spoke and um oh here it is i found it just to give you guys an idea this is how manipulating um this man is and like watch his actions um to me a uh, warrior chief a general whoever whatever would not put the youth and the women in front they would stand in front they would take the first shot they would be the one to take the first bullet not this guy this guy you see exactly in this video his true colors and yet even after this people still followed this idiot down the road to destruction as far as i'm concerned Pull women across. You thought you were tough with women? Cross the fucking line. Cross my chief line. Cross the fucking line. You want to do it? You want to do it? Cross the line. Cross the line. I put those cuffs on you just as fast as you put on me. Cross the line. See? You want to cross the line with a woman? Huh? Oh, woman cop. Oh, you want to know what a man feels like? I'm right here. Cross the line. Cross the line. I'm already talking to J Division. I'm talking to the military captain. Okay. I've talked to uh, what you call it, uh, uh, APTN. I got them on the line. The military want to be negotiator to this because we can't negotiate with you guys. Okay. Call the military up in Oromocto. I got his number to my car. It's Captain. Uh, uh, I'll get the name here in a second. But you call the when you call the captain, the military will be here. We can't negotiate. We're going through. Where do you want to go? Right through. We want to go out of our way. 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 You guys don't even have the right to be here. They're filming everybody. Hello. 
Oh, Captain Dupree, how you doing? Right. Uh, are you doing well, we have a competition here with the RCMP. There's uh, quite a few of them here, and uh, we need a negotiator to come down because uh, they're not letting us go through federal land. This is our federal land, and we can go through and they're blocking our road. So uh, this is the time to, uh, you should get your butt down here to negotiate, or uh, it's going to go to the next step. Well, uh, would you like to talk to one of these uh, stripes because they have no uh, nobody else but captain? Can we give them a number? Hey, you want to talk to him on the phone here? Okay, hold on. Come back here. Here, he'll talk to you right here. Captain, Yes, sir. We have the right of 1752 treaty for the English, for the British, to step involved. If we have a problem with RCMP, they're here to protect us as well. So, since you guys are objective, yes. like before, you guys used to work with us. Now you're working with SWN. You're now objective. Now you are illegally RCMP. You just got a badge to be badass, <laughs> to be illegal. Punks like you, man, I used to have fun with you. <laughs> Even I was having fun. Oh, Buck, you ever play floor or something? You ever push a penny across the floor for this sheet? Stand in the toilet and say, row, row, row your boat? <laughs> We're on the Bronson Road. It's not Bronson Road. No, it's not Bronson Road. You're giving the wrong directions. It's the airline the road, I guess they call it. There you go. Get yeah. the right directions. So All right, see, just give me a second. Going. I'll give it back to you. Hello, Captain. Yeah. yeah, so that's how that guy worked. He knew how to talk, yes, educated, but like I said before, Education sometimes is a really, really bad thing in the wrong hands. And in this guy's case, definitely in the wrong hands uh, for the wrong reasons. And if he had have taken his...